where people, even in the global south, a trust media when it comes from the north. You know, like BBC is supposedly trustworthy. This understanding that, well, it's a European channel, therefore it must be telling the truth, you know, and a Chinese channel, channel is giving the Chinese point of view. That's a racist argument. At, sometimes at night before I go to sleep, I watch stupid TikToks, you know. TikTok is not a Western dominated app. And yet even TikTok struggles uh, to be able to platform and highlight, you know, views of the South. So there's that hardware question, very important question, should not be underestimated. The hardware gap means that in many cases, even media of the South has to rely on the hardware of the North. There's hardware things, you know, don't have um, sophisticated satellite systems. But actually underneath that is even more difficult challenge, which is the issue of credibility. You know, at some level, colonialism has this legacy in our world where people, even in the global south, uh, trust media when it comes from the north. You know, like BBC is supposedly trustworthy or CNN or Agence France Press or the Associated Press and so on. There's a kind of a sense that Western media is, you know, not biased. There's a sense, even though that is decre decreasing now, still there, all these decades after colonialism, people still think, well, maybe it's a, it's a report from, you know, the New York Times, it, it's credible. They have purchased credibility as part of their colonial heritage. Um, so it's very difficult for media houses in the South to generate the same kind of credibility. Firstly, people don't have the resources. Like, you know, why is it that, say, South African Broadcasting Corporation, government television station, is not watched outside South Africa? You know, th there is no appetite to watch South African television or to watch Cuban television or to watch even Brazilian television. Now, some of it is language. But language has never been the main barrier. Um, there's also the sense that, well, they tell South Africa stories, not international. International is the domain of the old colonial countries. They dominate the telling of international news. So that's a huge challenge, this idea of credibility. And I think Chinese media is finding that now. Um, Chinese media has a hard time establishing you know, itself globally because even in countries in the South, people don't necessarily see it as the most reliable television you know, channel available. CGTN broadcasts all over the place, but people say, well, that's a Chinese you know, a network, or it's a Chinese government thing, or you know, it's, it's the Chinese anchors. But it's okay for BBC, you see, that's British broadcasting, a tiny country, United Kingdom, but they have so much credibility, you know, BBC said. Information disorder, who can you trust? We have to close this credibility gap uh, because it's ridiculous. This understanding that, well, it's a European channel, therefore it must be telling the truth, you know, and a Chinese channel, channel is giving the Chinese point of view. That's a racist argument. So to overcome this credibility gap, this credibility gap, in my opinion, is as severe as the hardware gap. Facebook is a Western dominated platform, and yet, you know, that's the hardware gap. And yet we have to try to go on Facebook and say, hey, listen, I've just done a, a show, come and watch. Um, but then there comes a credibility gap because, you know, you'll get, as they used to do, label you as state affiliated media or this or that or the other. Um, and it's not only that, they'll just throw you off the platform saying, you know, you're promoting propaganda or you're promoting lies. I mean, you know, you challenge the Western story on things and they'll say it's propaganda. It's, Putin's talking points, you get removed. So you see how these two gaps, the hardware gap and the credibility gap come together. Uh, because there's a hardware gap, uh, we're not able to generate um, big media companies, you know, with massive delivery of news through cable TV. Uh, even though social media is so powerful, there are influencers and all of that, but there are often clips 
from big cable television companies that get shared a lot. We have to go on their platforms to promote our material. And when we go on their platforms, they deplatform you or they belittle you by putting a tag saying this is not serious and so on. So that increases the credibility gap. So that's why these two gaps sort of work in tandem. Now, you say, why don't we build our own platforms? Well, it's true. A country like China has built a lot of platforms, Weibo, Billy Billy, and so on. But again, these are not easy to become universal because the principal language on the platform is Chinese. And, you know, Chinese is not a language that a lot of people around the world are going to learn. Um, for good reasons or bad reasons or whatever reason, English is dominating in the kind of social media world. You know, it's just, it's a fact, you know, and it's hard to fight this fact, but it's hard to get people to say, go on Billy Billy, don't go on Facebook or whatever. They're going to do all these things. People are going to go on all these platforms. So it's these things together, this hardware gap, it's very difficult to close that. So yeah, these two things, you know, they, they're like the DNA strands, um, the double helix of a DNA strand the hardware gap and the credibility gap, and they work together for a very long time, for decades now. But the hardware gap has to be closed, but the real gap, and the most difficult gap to close, is the credibility gap. My friend Eduardo Galeano, the great Uruguayan writer, used to repeat this very nice story. He would say that, you know, scientists say that humans are made of atoms, but actually that's not true. Humans are not made of atoms. Humans are made of stories. Um, what makes a human different from everything else in the world is we carry stories inside us. And I believe very much that the role of the storyteller in society um, is the role of the peacemaker because you bring people together. And I think stories or the exchange of stories humanizes people. It makes us love and appreciate each other. But what happens often is the way the world works is we start losing that humanity we learn and you know we have so many common problems in the world but because we're not listening to each other we're not attending to the different stories that different people carry we don't trust each other we want to confront each other we go to war and so on and